Hello, hello, hello. Hey, I want to acknowledge my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. And I want to thank all the speakers that came up here and thank all the elected officials that are here as well because we're a team. And the way we get this done is by being a team. And I got to acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this race with me. But also, I want to tell you guys, your warrior is here right now. I'm here right now, and the Lord has prepared me for a time like this right here. Because we're going to need people to go to Washington that's getting ready to be that warrior that's not afraid to talk about Jesus Christ. That's not afraid to talk about what is right. And I'm telling you, I'm here now. And I'm going to Washington, so Senator Warnock might as well get ready to leave. And I'm going to tell him, don't let the door hit him as he's walking out. Don't let him hit him. Because I want to tell you all this little story here that I've been telling for a little while. And the story goes like this. There was a man that died early in life. He died early in life, and as he got to heaven, St. Peter met him at the pearly gate. And St. Peter says, sir, you're here a little early right now. And your name ain't on the road. But you're the only one in history that's going to get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. Then I'm going to take you to heaven and I'm going to take you to hell and you get a chance to determine where you want to be. And he puts the guy in his elevator and he takes him all the way down to hell and the doors open up and there's a party going on. He sees some of his friends down there. He's having a great time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, you ready to go? You ready to go? And the guy said, I got to leave. He said, yes, you got an important decision. He puts him in his elevator, takes him all the way up to heaven. They get to heaven and there's people floating around on clouds, having a good time. And all of a sudden, a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this. I think I want to go to hell. He said, that seemed like my type of place. I want to go to hell. St. Peter said, you sure? He said, yeah. He throws him in his elevator. This guy goes all the way back down to hell. Now the doors open up. It is hot. People are crying. They're terrible, having a miserable time. And the guy goes, wait, 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 wait. A couple of hours ago, there was a party going on. And Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. <laughs> and I tell you this right there, that because the guy I'm running against, Senator Warnock, and all the people on the left is campaigning right now, they're lying to you. They're telling you this is the new normal, trying to take you down in that elevator. I'm telling you, don't get in that elevator. There's a new way. There's a new way, and that way is to get out and vote for Herschel Walker. That way is to get out and vote for people that believes in that American flag, that believes in the Constitution of the United States of America. Because what we got now is people that have went to Washington have forgotten about. That's not what your country can do for you, but that's what you can do for your country. People have gotten by those words. Now all they're thinking about it themselves, making excuses. You heard it during that debate. You heard it. I've been asking for Senator one night to debate me. He was running, but he didn't know I can catch him. And when I caught up with him, I caught up with him. That he knew that the Lord had prepared me for him because I've heard about people like him. I've heard about him because my father told me, watch those smooth-talking, slick-dressing guys. They say all those words, but they don't mean them. Because he said, he was telling you, America need to apologize for its whiteness. I said, have you read the Bible? Has he read the Bible? Because God said, how can you forgive your fellow? If you can't forgive your fellow brother, how can he forgive you? He hadn't read that, has he? And then he threw out, I'm a Matthew 25 guy. Matthew 25 said, when I was hungry, you fed me. He said, when I was homeless, you gave me a place of refuge. But he didn't say when I didn't have, they couldn't pay my rent. You evicted me, did he? He didn't learn that out there in Matthew 25. But I told him his redemption is here because his name is Herschel Walker. And I'm not afraid. Because what they did to us not long ago, you got to remember this. If you disagree with him, they were going to call you a racist. You know that. They were going to call you a racist. They've been calling me all types of names lately. They think it's going to hurt my feeling. But the Lord prepared me for that. Because they called me a coon the other day. I don't know if y'all know that. Can y'all believe that? 
but I'm from the country. They don't know a coon is one of the smartest animals out there. They said, go. Hey, so don't call me. Call me something that's going to hurt my feelings. The Lord prepared me for a moment like this. And do y'all doubt, can y'all doubt that he was going to beat me in a debate? I'm Herschel Walker. I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia. The Lord has prepared me for a moment like this. So I knew it when he decided to come and debate me that he was in trouble then. So right now, they're trying everything they can. They're trying everything they can. They've spent over $60 million against me already. And the race is tired or I'm in the lead, which means he don't even know how to spend his money and then spending our money like he's going crazy. I'm telling you right now, it is time that we go to the polls. It's time we go to the polls and we can change it. It's up to us to change it because let me tell you what they're doing because in less than two years, think about it, in less than two years you see where we're at. And it's his fault because he was deciding vote. People say, why you say he was deciding vote? I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because he should have said no. All he had to do is say no. Isn't that easy to say? No. I mean, my father told me no. He meant no. And now he's uh, over there saying yes because he let Joe Biden ride his bike. And I'm telling you right now, straighten your bike up, Senator. Straighten your bike up. It's hard for somebody to ride your bike when you're walking straight. Straighten your bike up. You don't have to do what they tell you to do. Do what's right for the people of Georgia. You're not from New York. You're not from New York. You're not from California. Do what's right for the people of Georgia. But yet he went to Washington trying to be slick, talking that smooth talk. But when he got in that debate, you saw what happened. They asked him his name. He was like, oh, no, I thought he was Scooby-Doo. We're like, what are you talking about? It is time for you to get this right. And we can get it right because he's the one that put our police in the position they're in right now. This is the toughest time in America to be a law enforcement officer, man and women in blue, that he called them names like bullies and thugs and stuff. Let me tell you this right here. He's made heroes out of criminals. He made demons out of our law enforcement. Well, not on my watch. I'm going to tell you what, not on my watch because your warrior has come down right now. And I tell you, I've been watching in the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, I'm ready to put a stop to this. Hey, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, so I'm ready for this, because we got to support our men and women in blue. We got to get behind them, not just talk about them, but get behind them and support our men and women in blue, and hold criminals responsible for what they do. Because even in the great garden of Adam and Eve, did the Lord not say from this place here, you have total freedom. But if you eat and touch this tree right here, you will surely die. They were held to responsibility. Well, it's time that we do the same. We are a country of immigrants, but we also are a country of law, and we got to get back to the law. And the way we do that is by holding people in jail for what they do wrong. Hey, the guy I'm running against, think about this. Think about this. He believes in no cash bail. That means they just walk through the jail like a revolving door. Not on my watch, they're not. They're going to be responsible for what they do. And then releasing prisoners out of jail, out of the prison. Are you serious? Now, we become prisoners in our home. Not on my watch. I'm telling you, don't let them take you down in that elevator and tell you this is the new normal. This is not the new normal, people. This is not the new normal. What is happening, we got the wrong leaders in Washington. We got the leaders in Washington that rather play golf and go and have coffee. They rather be doing these things except doing their job. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm from Riceville, Georgia. I don't know how to do anything but work. And I love working for you guys because you guys are my family. I don't care what color you are. It don't matter about your color. And think about it, think about it. The man I'm running against is in a church of one of the greatest leaders to ever live, a black leader that said, it's not the color of your skin but the content of your character. And all he talks about is the color of your skin. Is he not wrong? Something is wrong with him because in my Bible that I read, God don't even know the color of your skin. He knows your heart. So that may be what he need to get back to is touch his own heart to see where he's going to go. Because the Bible I read, it says a house divided cannot stand. So why is he trying to divide us? Oh, he only want to vote. That's what he's trying to do. Take us down in that elevator and tell us there's a good place down there. No, it's not. Don't, this is not the new normal, people. It is not the new normal. Hey, they gave up our energy. They gave up our energy. And what are they doing now? Making excuses. Well, I'm not by, about making excuses. I'm about coming up with solutions. Excuses get you nowhere. And when I was playing football, I can't tell you what the coaches said about my excuses. So they said some bad words about excuses, but I don't curse, so I'm not going to say it. But I'm going to tell you right now, excuses, when you talk about giving up our energy, you're talking about going to our enemy that don't like us. Do you know the definition of enemy? Those are people that don't like us. Oh, I forgot. They don't like the, the definition of words. They don't even know the definition of a woman. 
And I can tell them the definition of a woman is because in my Bible I read, it said man and woman. And a woman is from the real of a man. So that's all they had to say. Wait, wait a minute. They always confused because they said a man can get pregnant. Oh, no, he can't. Oh, no, he can't, guys. Don't let them take you down in that elevator. They're trying to fool you right now. They want to get you off track. They want to get you off track because this economy is terrible because of them. After two years of being in office, this is where we're at right now. And now you're asking for six more years. We can't take six more years of you, Senator. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to get out. Because he's saying, I work with everybody. No, you don't. You don't work with nobody because every time they ask you to do something, you stand back if you got to get it because you don't want to get your hands dirty because he's too clean. My father told you about those clean people. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They want to just hide in the shadows. Well, you can't hide in the shadows with Herschel Walker. I'm like Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, you're last. And he's going to be last right here. <laughs> Guys, it is time for us to get this together. And the only way we can get it together is by coming together as one America. Not two America, not three Americans, but as one America. Because there's a man and there's a woman. Let's get out of this thing where they're bringing pronouns in our military. Think about that. Pronouns in our military. I don't even know what a pronoun is in the military. First of all, hey, I can tell you, Russia, China, and Iran not talking about no pronouns. They're talking about war. And we're talking about pronouns. We're getting our military men and women going to get them killed out there talking about pronouns. My pronouns are sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. We need to continue to support our military, support our men in blue, and to support this border. Wow, what is happening now? These people are just messing this country up, are they not? They're messing this country up. We got to get leaders in Washington that got the strength to be a leader, be that warrior that I was talking about. God said, I don't want no politician because I don't even know how to spell politician, but I do know how to spell warrior, and I'm that warrior that he's been talking about. I'm the one that's going to go to Washington and say, no, I'm not going to do this no more. I'm sick of this. I represent Georgia. And he seemed like, Senator, why not represent California? Have y'all noticed that? He vote like he's in California because a lot of his money comes from California. He vote like he's from New York. A lot of his money comes from New York. So he's just doing whatever somebody telling him to do. And I told you earlier, I said, straighten up, Senator. Don't let him ride your bike. Straighten up, sir. And he's just wearing those yeah, his suits. That's probably the reason he can't straighten up. So those suits get kind of stiff when somebody get on them, do they not? I know that. But then we got to protect this border. We have to protect this border. You heard me early on say we are a country of immigrants. But we also a country of laws. We have laws in this country that people are not as, as listening to. Guys, we need leaders that's going to get us back to where we need to be at. And it can't start with them. The reason why, they don't even know there's a problem. Have you know that? They don't even know there's a problem. They just keep going on and on and on, want to talk about everything else except the problem. You sweep, keep sweeping dirt underneath the carpet, what it's going to do is going to swell. Then you're going to stumble. Well, we're getting ready to stumble, but not on my watch because I'm going to catch you and pick you back up. And as my offensive lineman told me, first of you follow me, I'm going to take you to the promised land. <laughs> but I'm going to tell y'all, vote for me. I'm going to get us all to the promised land because I can tell you, we can get there together. We can get there together. And then, no, 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 no. There's more here that I have to say because, Senator, why not also, now they want to go after our kids. Think about it. They're going after our kids because we're a little bit too old. We ain't going to fall for it. Like I said, we're not getting in that elevator, but they're going to go after our kids because they want to take them down in that elevator. Not on my watch because they're trying to tell your kid because he's white, he's an oppressor, trying to tell the black kids, oh, you're a victim. No, I'm going to tell us all we're victorious because we're in America. We're in the United States of America. And I found that America's dream. I found that America's dream, and my mom told me I was big bone with me. I was fat, and I used to have a speech impediment, but I got over it because of the grace of God. And that's what I would say, because of the grace of God. And you heard that in, in some countries, you can't even believe in Jesus. You have to believe in that leader, but you can believe in Jesus in this country. Just think about this, people. Think about this. Now, we're deciding whether you can pray on a field alone by yourself. That's what we're deciding rather than thinking about this economy, because they don't want to talk about this economy they don't want to talk about giving up our energy. They want to decide whether you can pray alone. Let me tell you, you can pray. You can pray because when you speak the Lord's name, he hears our voices. So when one or two speak about God, he hears what you say. So we need to start talking about God. So I'm not asking you just to contribute to my campaign. I'm asking you to pray for my campaign. So they're coming, but I said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I want us to know that this is not the new normal. And this green agenda. Whoa, think about it. I just saw a little man over here talking about agriculture. I was looking at that flag, and I remember this. 
I remember this because I've been getting out meeting with the people. And all of a sudden, sometimes I ask questions that they don't understand, but they don't know I'm from the country. So when I asked those country, Senator One not realized when he did that debate that he don't want to mess with a country boy, did he? He found out this country boy know a lot more than he thought he did. So I'm telling you about this agriculture. I asked somebody in the agriculture world, what will a combine cost today? And they told me a user may cost $600,000. And I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of money. So I said, what would an electric combine cost? <laughs> Think about it, $1.8 million. That's a whole lot of money right there. But listen to this. But they said, you can only use it for two hours, then you got to charge it. That means it won't work. It won't work here in the United States of America because people have that, have that crop there by a certain time. Yes, we got to be good stewards in the environment, but we also have to do our part, but everyone else got to do their part. We got to do what's going to work for the United States of America right now. And what's going to work right now is let's get back to our own fossil fuel. Let's get back to our own drilling. Let's get back to our own job. Let's get back to doing our own thing. And people ask me why I'm running. I'm running because I'm sick and tired of people being in Washington just voting just to vote just because they're in Washington, D.C. I don't even like Washington, D.C. I don't even know what the name of the Redskins no more. They changed the name of them. They changed the name of everything. Let me tell you what they're bad. They're taking us back. That's taking us back. We've come so far, and they want to take us back again. We don't want them to do that. Don't let them put us in that elevator. The only way we can stop it is by voting. The only way we can stop it is by voting. we got to get out and vote. we got to get out and vote. Are they going to change this world that we won't recognize it again? Because I'm going to tell you this. When America leads, the whole world does well. But right now, America is confused. These foreign leaders are confused because they don't think that America can be so silly talking about pronouns, how you identify. Our kids are behind in school because instead of teaching them about math and reading, they're teaching them about CRT. Instead of teaching them how to spell, they're teaching them about gender uh, ideology. Instead of putting security guards in the schools to protect our kids, they over there talking about men should be in women's sport. No, they should not be in women's sport. It's time for us to put a stop to that. As I told you, as I told you, when my father told me no, he meant no. And then when I got too big for my britches, thought I could control this house, he told me, if you don't like the rules underneath my roof, leave my house. So that may be the time that we tell some of the people here, if you don't like the rules of the United States of America, you can leave. Maybe if somebody else will take you, I don't know if they'll take you because in their country, you have to do what that government tells you to do. That's what Senator Warnock wants you to do. He wants the government to control your life. Have you noticed that? He want the government to control your life. They can't even control themselves, but they want to control your life. And then he relished. You saw how excited he got about it in that debate when he said, you know, I'm helping the kids out with the student loan. I'm like, what? Wait a minute, this student loan, did y'all sign co-sign for somebody's loan? I didn't co-sign for nobody's loan, so why are you making me pay somebody else's debt that they started the debt? Now I got to pay for it. I'm working hard enough to pay my own debt. Now I got to pay somebody else's debt. But that debt is $400 billion. That's a lot of debt. I don't want that debt there. Let him pay for his own debt. I don't know how to pay for his debt, but he was excited about it. But he was trying to take them down in that elevator. All he was trying to do is get a vote. All he was trying to do is get a vote. Let me tell you what. Don't be tricked. Don't be tricked. This is the United States of America. And we got some good people here. We're not racist people. We're not racist people. We're good people. But we got to come together. It is time for us to come together. Don't let them take you down in that elevator. I'm telling you right now, they will say and do anything for power right now. You've seen it. You've seen it, so we got to wake up. Get in the game. We don't have to kick them out. Let's vote them out. We can vote them out. Let's not kick them out. Let's vote them out. Because then they'll be on you about that, too. they get on us about everything. Now they was on me about stuff I don't even know I've done yet, but they still on me about it. But it don't bother me because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This God is a good God. I want to leave y'all with something now. I want to leave you with something because everyone is always thinking somewhere else is better. Somewhere else is better. They're always thinking, oh, there's some other country better. No, it's not. Don't let them take in that elevator. There's no country better than the United States of America. The United States of America is the greatest country in the world. So being this country, boy, being this country, boy, I, I heard this little said. And it was about this bull out in the field. This bull was out in the field with six cows. Six cows and three of them were expecting calves. So he was a father three times. And all this bull had to do was eat grass. It was all the way up to his kneecap. All he had to do was eat grass. 
But when he kept his nose up against the fence, looking at three other cows in the other field over there, and as he was looking at these three other cows in the other field over there, he started thinking about them rather than thinking about what he had. So he decided one day, I'm going to jump this fence. I'm going to jump this fence and get over there with those three other cows that didn't belong to him. That day came, that day came when he got back, and he took off running, and he dove over that fence, and his belly got cut up all under the bottom, and he rolled over on the other side, and he was so excited about it. He ran to the top of the hill, but when he got up there, he realized they were bulls too. So that I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that, that don't think that there's something better somewhere else, because they're not. This is the United States of America, and when we're united, it's called united. When we're united, we're one person, and we're one God. There is one God, and that's how we come together. To put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, put your faith in your fellow man, and we get out and get this done. Now, if you haven't early voted, you heard the senator say, if you early voted, and you need to tell 10 of your friends, he told you, Tell 10 of your friends, get out and vote. If you don't have friends, go make some. Let's get out and vote. And in November, November the 9th, we wake up. And all that, we have a new country. We have people that believe in this country. God bless you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.